Hello everybody, this is Panda here with a first update of what I learned in regards to the Pro Jared controversy. First and foremost, I am so happy to have seen some type of response from Holly Conrad in regards to the scandal that's still currently going, still being talked about too, I guess. And even though she did respond via Twitter with a huge thread, I would love to see Pro Jared's video reaction to all this, or I guess not a reaction, but more like a, a verification, a clarification clarification of the events of what's really going on with this scandal. So here we are at Holly's thread. I'm not going to go through all of it. There's quite a bit of information to dissect from all of this, but I will be going over a few points that I would personally like to talk about and then discuss what I've learned at the end of this video. The first problem I have with this, however, is her very first sentence. She says, I've been trying to help someone I care about leave an abusive relationship. I don't believe that having relations, personal, intimate relations with someone's going to help them leave their abusive relationship. That's not the right, I don't think she went about it the right way. And like I said, then she goes on with this huge tweet storm, tweet thread, whatever you want to call it. Apparently Keemstar said something about being a side hoe. I don't, who gives, I don't give a shit about Keemstar, honestly, whatever, who cares? Mo moving on past that. One thing I will say is that she did good by saying, before going forward, I want to make clear that I do not approve of any influencer exchanging news with fans. And it, of obviously it's an abuse of power and it's not good. So that, that's great for her to at least admit that Pro Jared made some terrible decisions. But going off of that, she does continue on saying that she's seen relevant receipts, which prove that ProJared confirmed the consent and ages of those individuals he interacted with. Okay, so basically someone's lying about this or they're not. It's it's kind of up in the air. I would like to see those receipts if that's true. In this post right here, it gets a little more juicy. Some questions are being answered and then there are more being asked from this. Holly says, in early 2018, Heidi told Jared she wanted him to explore his feelings for me. She was enjoying the advantages of an open relationship, including a long-term boyfriend, and wanted Jared to do the same. Okay, right there, just that post alone should have people saying, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, we got some freaks on our hands. Okay, open relationship, those are never, and I'm not trying to judge anybody's relationship if it, if it is open or closed. What I am saying is that those open relationships, you have to be very delicate with those because they can turn sour real fast. And here is a great example of that happening. So clearly it was only in early 2018 where Heidi was okay with all this, but down the line, obviously she got jealous and then all this shit happened. And right here with this thread of text messages, we get to see a little bit more about Heidi, how either insane she is or manipulative she is or weird she is or just obsessive and jealous she is i mean look she's sending these again there's she's sending these at freaking two o'clock in the morning let's look at this one in particular p.s if you decide to stay in the guest room that doesn't mean you have to bang or anything i never thought i, I don't know who those two people are would be the type to do it right away anyway but you know them better than me don't worry about me and do what works <laughs> and then she continues on <laughs> at the very end it's everything okay okay wish you would have texted me but good night anyway it's like it, Come on! People are sleeping at this time of the night. Jesus. Moving down a little further into the thread, we find out that Heidi wanted to ruin their D&D show because of her jealousy, manipulation control, all that, etc., etc., all that crap. We have a bunch of screenshots here. It's pretty scary, actually, if you read it all, which I'm not going to because I don't got time for that. No one's got time for that. We all have to get on with our lives. But anyway, uh, Holly does say that Heidi's plan was to ruin Pro Jared by accusing him of being a cheater and blah, blah blah and an abuser blah 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 all that stuff and now here is a very interesting post Holly says that Heidi was the first to go public with a statement and not Pro Jared and I guess the reason why we didn't find this out is because she did it on Facebook really on Facebook Come on, Heidi. Seriously? Oh, oh, now I know your last name is O'Farrell. Okay, uh, I'll try to remember that. And then in this post, further down the thread, we see that Heidi is, well, she's devious. She basically wanted to find Jared's gold play button and steal it for whatever reason. I, I don't know. She, this is all just a bunch of weird shit going on. I'll just say that much. Now here is a contradiction on Holly's part in which a few people pointed, pointed out, not too many, but she says, if Heidi truly felt that she had to flee her abuser, 
Would she ever go back to the house of the person she claims abused her? Jared paid for movers and they'd already finished by then. Survivors typically avoid their abusers out of real fear, the way Jared has and I have. Okay, typically. The key term is typically. Not everyone has that strength. Not everyone has that resolve to move on. It's, it's some weird, I, I can't describe it. I'm not a psychologist or anything like this. I, <laughs> I'm not a therapist. I don't know much about this dynamic. However, I can tell you for a fact, some survivors do go back. They do go back for whatever reason. It's we I don't understand it, but it does happen. And then in the very next tweet, leaving an abuser is difficult. Really? Really? It takes survivors an average of seven times to leave for good. So you just basically contradicted yourself seven times. That would mean that Heidi has to go back another six more times uh, on average to completely get over this. And right here is the last post on this thread that I want to discuss before I finish up. It reads, Beyond the satisfaction of revenge, Heidi received 100,000 new Twitter followers by publicly and falsely accusing me of ruining their marriage and labeling pro Jared as an abuser. She began using the attention from the crisis to promote herself. Now, yes, that is completely true. I will give you that, Holly. You are absolutely right. Heidi, you've been called out proper at that last, uh, the last sentence. I don't know if it'll last me the rest of my life or whatever, but I'm definitely going to savor it. So the last question I have about that is, did Heidi purposely plan this out just to get followers? Some of you are going to say, yeah, of course she did. The evidence is right there. Others may say, no, not entirely. Well, I have kind of a, an interesting way to look at this. So here's my thought process. What if Heidi was just so insanely jealous and controlling that she wanted validation from strangers on the internet that he was acting the way he was. Because remember, not everyone is right in their mind. Everyone can be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs every now and then. I know I am. But regardless of your mental well-being, I do agree with Holly in the fact that there is a lot of misconceptions coming from Heidi's side, that there are more things that we still don't know about because now it's just, it's he said, he said, she said, she said, he said, bullshit. To give Holly credit where credit is due, I am happy to have seen that she at least responded somehow to this. The timeline of events according to Holly seems to be accurate. However, there are contradictions within her thread, which still make me believe that it's not quite right on her part, on Jared's part, or on Heidi's part. They're all in the wrong by the end of, well, what I've seen on Twitter anyway. So here's what I've learned from this whole thing. Number one, being in an open relationship can lead to disastrous conclusions. Number two, regardless if you're going to seek help from friends, family, therapists, whomever you choose to seek aid from in order to get out of a relationship, you need to make sure that the source of help is actually helping you. Because from what it seems on my end anyway, and this is coming from an outsider's point of view, not knowing their personal lives or anything, it seems to me that Holly really wasn't helping Pro Jared just by talking to him and sleeping with him and, you know, collaborating with him on shows and stuff. She seems like a good friend, sure, but it didn't seem like it was actually helping his relationship with Heidi at the time. Number three, and again, this is something that we should all recognize by now in our lives. Some people have issues when it comes to jealousy, to manipulation, controlling their spouse or their uh, significant other, whoever. And if you know a person like that, you have to understand that sometimes they are going to lash out. They're going to say some things that they don't mean. They're going to say some things that are just not well thought out. And by that, what I'm saying is we all need to be careful of what we say. We need to take a couple of extra minutes, pause our thinking process, and really evaluate how we're going to present ourselves when we're dealing with issues like this. And that's gonna be it for this video. Until next time, I'll see you all later.